Hello and welcome to today's really thought-provoking and interesting video that I have prepared for you and that is going to be covering the topic of why hodling or holding cryptocurrency does not work. Yes, I totally understand this is going to be very confusing at first, at first time hearing this. Hey, how does it not work? We are seeing Bitcoin the best performing asset in the last 10 years. All you need to do is buy and hold to make money. Or well, in this video, I'm going to be hopefully giving you some very thought provoking opinions. I will be giving you my perspective on this chart and I will be taking some of these counter arguments that you have left me obviously from the post over on Twitter today saying I'm going to make this video. Uh, leave some, you know, leave some of your counter arguments down below because I always think with a good argument you have to be able to understand other people's point of, point of views, comprehend that and if you have a counter argument like I do today, present this with factual information though. Uh, so there, you know, that's, that's what I'm bringing you today. I, I truly hope uh, it not only helps you but also, you know, increases your understanding of the markets and, and how, you know, how they are moving. So I truly believe it's an interesting video. I'm going to enjoy making it and uh, yeah, sit back, relax and uh, enjoy. So we're going to be focusing primarily on Bitcoin in today's video. We're going to focus on Bitcoin. Why? Because it's, it's the biggest asset. It's, it's you know, one of the longest running cryptocurrencies. So we're going to primarily focus on Bitcoin. We're going to take a look at a few altcoins, XRP, starting here with uh, with Sand. Just for a, you know, starting with Sand, why it's not obviously a mainstream. Well, it's kind of mainstream, I suppose, but it's more of an up and coming cryptocurrency. Uh, but really just to emphasize the volatility that we have here. So obviously today, <laughs> why not? I attach the picture, obviously, that short position from around $8 that I'm currently in on sand. And, you know, the, the first thing that people are going to be thinking to themselves is, well, cryptocurrency is one of the most volatile assets in the world. You know, you can make money extremely quick per se. And I'm not here to deny that. I absolutely agree with you. You know, if you time, it's all about the timing. If you time assets well, then obviously you can absolutely make very large sums of money very quickly because of that increased volatility being in cryptocurrency. You know, this guy replying to my comment with a thousand percent increase on mana. Yeah, no, I understand Mano was absolutely moving, <laughs> moving mad as well as myself on sand, you know, as an example here. Buying two dollars, that obviously topped out at about eight dollars. You know, you're seeing, you know, very, very, very high percentage moves in a relatively short amount of time. Okay, so in short periods of time, you're talking about a month here. You know, we're going from two dollars to eight dollars. You know, that's extreme. That's extreme. But on the same flip of the coin, we obviously start to, you know, <laughs> it's kind of funny because when I'm wording it, it's like, you know, the technical analysis is how the charts move. Uh, I always will stand by this. And uh, man, I could just give an unlimited amount of examples of why I feel that the charts and the technicals run cryptocurrency in particular. I'm not talking about stocks here, I'm talking about cryptocurrency, why the technicals run the cryptocurrency market. You know, I just so many examples and, um, you know, and how the technicals are going to outperform the fundamental traders when this drop comes and come it will. Obviously, we topped out at eight dollars. And what happened from eight dollars managed to grab the short positions that actually fell to four dollars okay so you're seeing 50 percent drops in price so what is the thing that we're looking at here it's, it's just emphasizing the volatility yes bitcoin or altcoins in particular can move up very 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 quickly but they can fall just as quick that sand actually dropped 50 percent for eight dollars just over eight dollars to to four dollars in in eight days eight eight days a 50 percent drop in price that's uh scary when you think about the majority of people the majority of people are not buying at two dollars yeah majority are FOMOing in when the crowd becomes aware of the coin, you know, seven, eight dollars, you know, they're, they're, most people are buying the highs. So you can make money on the way up, you have to be in early, but the majority are going to buy the top and, and actually lose a lot of money on the way back down. But yeah, we're going to focus, it's just a brief introduction of volatility, understanding the volatility. Yes, you can make great gains, but you can obviously lose a lot of money as well here. We're going to focus uh, though on Bitcoin. OK, so if we come up to a weekly chart, look at this Bitcoin chart. We're looking back from 2015 to basically 2022. Um, you know, we're looking at quite a hefty sum of price action here and obviously massive percentage gains to the upside. You know, we're talking 30,000 percent gains. And the first counter argument to what I will say in this video, hodling does not work. OK, the first counter argument, of course, is going to be this. I was expecting it. 
Why would you sell an asset that was the best performer in the last 10 years and is in a monthly uptrend? Okay, so I think we can agree it is one of the best performers in the last 10 years. Absolutely agreed. And it is in a monthly uptrend. I also agree with this statement, okay, because this is a fact. These are both facts. It is one of the best performers, and of course, it is in a monthly uptrend. So how can I come at you in today's video and say hodling does not work? Well, of course, there's two flips of two sides of the coin. Hodling does and doesn't work. I will first say why it does work, I suppose, because I obviously I'm not uh, fully one sided. I can understand both sides of this coin and you know I can explain it very well, I believe, because you know, I just have a lot of experience with this. So why hodling does work? Obviously, I have great experience talking primarily from the stock market, obviously relatively early got into Bitcoin, I suppose, when you look at the percentage gains that we've made from first buy-ins of crypto. But you know, I think I've got the longest experience, obviously, from the stock market. Um, but, you know, I want to focus this on cryptocurrency. Stock market's another video. Um, so why hodling does work? Well, like this guy says, of course, it's in a monthly uptrend. It is the best performer. But one of the most vital, important bits of information that many people will leave out, because let's think, on an average, average person comes to YouTube, okay, they type in Bitcoin, they type in what will be the price of Bitcoin in five years or one year or 10 years or whatever this might be. The first thing that's going to come up is going to be the, the snake, the, what is it, the snake salesman, you know, the, the salesman of the coins, yeah, that are not in it for any reason other than themselves. OK, so there will be the people that are shouting up the light, highest numbers, the, you know, the biggest amount of charts. You know, Bitcoin's going to a million, Bitcoin's going to 10 million. Just numbers plucked from the, essentially numbers plucked from the air because they just want the, you know, it's just, you've got to be really, really careful. But this is the first thing people are going to see, because those are the people with the highest amount of followers. And this is what people are going to be led to believe. And you've seen it for yourself. You know, uh, these type of influencers essentially are paid from altcoin, you know, altcoin people to say, hey, promote this, promote this altcoin, promote this product, promote this X, Y, and Z. They will take the payment and then they will advertise it with no disclosure, of course, that they've been paid for this. So it's, it's one of these things that cryptocurrency, yes, is very volatile, but the majority of the projects that you're going to be shielded from people on YouTube are, you know, from having back end payments. So they don't actually believe or understand the product at all. They're just here taking the money, shill it to the, pro shill it to the public take the money, shill it to the public. Very, very, very shady business practice. But that's just what the norm is at the moment. It's an unregulated market, I suppose. So you've got to take great care. But this is why, so, so, so hodling does work if you are very early into the asset. So this is the great understanding that you need to get. I can come onto YouTube and say, hey, hodl Bitcoin, it's going to a million. First of all, I have obviously nobody has absolutely any idea that Bitcoin is going to a million. This is an extreme uh, prediction that you will see plastered left, right and center by by particularly in the moon boys that are just obsessed with Bitcoin going to very high prices. Million would be an extremely high value. You just have to think of market cap like. Anyway, I, I digress. So I don't want to go into too much detail on, on this in particular. But the, the first thing that you have to think is hodling. Yes, it works if you are very, very early into the asset. So, um, you know, maybe if you are the backhander, taking the money, receiving the money before you, you know, shill it after it's already up hundreds of percent. And yes, of course, hodling might work in this example. Or of course, if you are an early investor on Bitcoin, hodling will work. I, I agree with that. Hodling Bitcoin for the long term. If you are early, the key word here is early on any asset will work. OK, and now the counter argument, and this is the focus of my thesis, hodling does not work if you are entering the market today, for example. If you are entering the market over the past one year, hodling does not work. Why? Why does hodling not work? Even though essentially it's the same asset we're trading, but there is a great fundamental difference between the person that enters the market today or over the last few months versus the investor that has got into this 10 years ago. There is an absolute fundamental difference. And that is the psychology and the emotions that will play on you hodling. OK, so all we need to do is zoom down into a lower term time frame. OK, recently, Bitcoin has dropped from sixty nine thousand dollars, obviously, to 40, around forty two thousand dollars. This is a 40 percent drop in price earlier in the year. We dropped from sixty five thousand dollars to twenty eight thousand dollars, a 55 percent increase in price. 
Okay, Bitcoin obviously has large swings to the upside, large swings to the downside. It's all well and good to say, oh, just hodl, just buy more, buy the dip. When you're already up thousands and thousands of percent from buying lower, there is a massive psychological difference than the guy entering the market as a newbie today and buying. Because he can buy when everybody's shilling the hardest at $60,000, two weeks in the future to be down you know, 30% on his investment. Does this seem like a good strategy to just buy, hodl, and hope? The key word is hodl and hope for the best. You are placing your hope that this asset is going to rise in price. But it's very hard to do that when you are sitting massively underwater, okay? If you are down 30% on your original investment, you are very much literally just hopeful for the, for the next rise in price. Okay, and this is my perspective on why hodling doesn't work and why the majority of people will actually fail with this. Because of the swings that you will have to the downside, and the vast majority of people will be buying towards the highs of this, um, you know, when you are in those underwater positions, mentally, it's taxing. It's very taxing mentally. Okay, you obviously have to have sound strategies to get in and out of the market. If you are just, you know, if you are one of these people, and we have to remember this is the majority, that come onto YouTube, they watch the video, they think it's going to a million dollars, they buy in the euphoric stages, they then come back a month later, they're down 30% on their investment. Do you think these people are going to remain hodling? The answer is most likely not. That Most people are going to be fearful and then selling at the lows. Whose fault is this? Is it is it the influencer's fault that you know, hyped it up at the highs, or is it their fault for listening to them? Uh, I think we could say definitely the guy listening to them is at fault because you cannot blame your decisions on other people per se. We could say they equally share, they obviously don't share the responsibility. The responsibility is all on the investor, is their fault for listening to the moon boys. But at the same time, you can kind of understand how both could be at blame there potentially. Um, you know, one for hyping something up in excess and the other for actually listening to the, the, the hype without doing their own research you know obviously i understand well you could say both are almost at fault here more so on the investor themselves for listening i totally agree with this <laughs> they need to do their risk management understand where they're buying and where they're saying but the problem is they don't have they don't have that fundamental understanding they're just buying and trying to get rich quick which is never going to work of course but um I, I, I want to move on and I'm going to come back to obviously this question, but the, ne the next comment that I had, and that was, um, you know, I just kind of uh, had to almost laugh, but nothing personal, of course, it's just something that I see thrown around regularly. And that is, uh, what about if you hold a altcoin, for example, that has a very good future? It's a very good, very good use case. You cannot lose. You know, this is the statement that you'll see. You cannot lose if you do not sell. Okay. You cannot lose hodling xrp uh would you would be interested to hear why you don't believe this love what you do mate first of all thank you um hopefully this you're enjoying the video thus far and secondly yeah th this is an interesting wasn't it isn't it um you know everybody's shouting buy the dip buy the dip buy the dip buy the dip everybody shouts at you this is the altcoin of the future top five altcoins you've got to buy right now this is the this is the altcoin you need to get involved in and then when it drops 50 percent it's Ah, uh, you don't lose, and you don't, you know, it's not a loss until you sell. Ah, uh, just buy more. Um, you, you know, it, just, just these generic statements that are just totally worthless, but they're still repeated endlessly. Okay, so let's take a look at the XRP chart, and I and I know XRP. I mean, this is just disgusting. The, the, <laughs> It's a wick of uh, a 30% wick to the downside. I mean, <clears throat> this is on a four hour chart. Let, let, let's zoom up to the, the daily chart. Okay, here we go. So this is looking at XRP here. Let's zoom in a little bit. So this is from the last high to the low. We're looking at around 1,500 days of price action. Okay, so we're talking to nearly four years here uh, of price action. And uh, the, the comment, you know, this is thrown around a lot. XRP is one of these coins, and I know I'm going to get backlash from this, because XRP obviously has a very big fan club, I suppose, um, of XRP is the future. You don't want to sell XRP. The pump's going to come at any time. Uh, you know, there's so much... I've never seen... Well, I have seen other things like it. That's a lie. 
but Xtop is one of the most renowned for, you know, just being absolutely hyped up for no end. The amount of people that I, um, yeah, I'm, I'm not going to go into any more detail, but obviously referring to the question of, you know, what happens if you're invested in a project, be it XRP, be it X, Y, and Z altcoin, it's irrelevant. The question is, you can't lose unless you sell. And what about if it has a very good future? I mean, XRP, let's, let's just take a look at the percentage it is down from its current, you know, this current high that was in 18. It's currently down 93%. Overall, it had a drop of 97% to the downside. So currently, we're from all time high down 92%. Okay, so does this look to you something that's down 92%? Does that look like an altcoin that you cannot lose holding? I mean, this is obviously rhetoric. <laughs> this is a rhetorical question. As it is down 93%, but people are still under the belief that you cannot lose by buying XRP. I mean, this does this not seem to you very naive and do not think it's just this one comment. Take a look around you and look at some of the people that are investing into these altcoins. And it is because of the beliefs that have been instilled upon them via watching the Moon Boys videos. It will be because they've come onto YouTube, they've watched a video and somebody has talked them through the fundamentals of these coins. They've sold them the dream that they can get rich by just buying this coin not understanding that it's very likely there's a very high probability that the person shilling them that altcoin on youtube in the first place has been paid backhandedly by the by the creator or the, the marketing team i suppose of this altcoin this is public leaked information that you can see the top influencers are getting paid period it's, it's a, actually very public information obviously they didn't want that to be leaked but it has been leaked so the very high likelihood is, yes, some of these people are so drawn, investing lots of money into these investments because they truly believe in it. And it's just it just blows my mind. So, yeah, the, the, the comment of can you can't lose buying some of these altcoins? Well, the answer is it's down 93 percent. Of course, you can lose. The, probably the majority of people have lost on, on XRP, let's be honest. Um, you know, that, that would be my perspective on that. And. Obviously, now you could argue, you know, it's down 93%. This would be the time to look for buys. But you have to remember the vast majority, you know, XRP, 2018, 2019, 2020, absolutely massive euphoria everywhere you looked. You talk about shorting XRP, they tell you you're going to lose a lot of money. Um, anyway, bringing it back, back, back to a bit. Uh, anyway, for, for this subject, obviously, I've talked you through sand, explaining, you know, emphasizing the volatility. You can make money up, you can make money down, all based off of technicals, 100%. We've talked about XRP, how, you know, this is just one of the many projects that has been shilled absolutely hard, has a massive fan base, but just underperforms, period. Uh, but people still hold on to those dreams that they've been sold. And then we bring it back to end on Bitcoin bringing back to the original question of, yes, it is the best performing asset, but unless you have been invested early on this asset, how it, how hodling is mentally draining on you. And it kind of brings you on to, to this comment that I saw. Hodling or holding doesn't work, at least in her experience. After a whole year of checking her phone every 10 minutes, bad sleeping nights and being in Twitter 24 seven, the majority of coins are at the same prices as one year ago. My goal for the new year is trading only. And this is what I feel, feel a lot of people will be attracted towards. Okay. And that is, we, I think we can all agree. Well, actually, no, that's, that's a lie. I'm sure people are going to be looking at this video, disliking it and saying, Tanya, you, you don't know what you're all about. And that's fair enough. Everybody's entitled to their opinion. I'm just here sharing mine today. You don't have to believe you don't have to trust me. You do your own research. I'm just here to provide you some thought-provoking opinions. Nothing more, nothing less. Okay, I'm not trying to sell you anything at all in this video. I'm not telling you to buy or sell anything. Okay, just listen to my thoughts. Make your own opinions. But my opinion is, um, hodling, we are fairly late to Bitcoin. Let's say even if the highest price target that seems reasonable. Well, actually, no, let's ignore that. Let's see, let, let's see the next... I think next achievable goal that seems at least somewhat realistic, let's say is a hundred thousand dollars. Yeah. I think a lot of people would agree with me when they say, yeah, Bitcoin at a hundred thousand seems 
a realistic possibility. And for, okay, if that's the case, we're talking about 100% move to the upside. Okay, 100% move to the upside. So we're talking about a potential double. How long is this going to take? Is it going to take one month? Is it going to take one year? Is it going to take another 10 years to reach that? Well, that answer, of course, nobody knows. But the downside here is just as Bitcoin can reach 100,000, I think it's absolutely just as likely Bitcoin can reach, let's say, 13,000. So if we're looking at the 100% move to the upside, buying here and holding, you could also be potentially facing a, you know, about a 70%, 70, 80% move to the downside. So you can understand here how buying and hodling this asset you are greatly exposing yourself to somewhat limited upside move here because we are arguably late with a potential great risk to the downside. This might, you might believe this is unrealistic. You might believe this is never going to happen. The key word here is it's never going to happen. That is something you cannot say. And if you do say it, I would personally say you don't know what you're on about. Okay, anything is possible in the markets. That's the beauty of them. So, Hodling, yes, I agree. Hodling works if you are a very, 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 very early investor. Okay, you got into an asset very early and you are sat in thousands of percentage profits. For example, myself on sheep, you know, I understand sheep, uh, you know, I'm getting into this extremely early, really couldn't have got it into any earlier, literally made millions of percentage gains on sheep. Yeah? You have to remember there's a great difference to myself who still has some spot sheep that sat still in millions of percent profit, even though recently it has pulled back over 50%. People buying the high are down 50%. With a 50% decrease in price from my initial investment, I'm still up, you know, <laughs> millions in percentage points. Because although we dropped 50%, it's still such an increase in price from my original buy-in. It's, you know, I'm not bothered about that. I'm not bothered about that 50% decrease in price because it's just like I'm still up so much and it's the same on Bitcoin you can withstand 50% drops in price when you are still overall up thousands of percent yeah and it's the the, the problem here so let me emphasize and, and summarize hodling does work if you are very 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 early into an investment yeah because you are in a somewhat carefree state of mind where you can approach buy the dip with a different mentality. But if you are investing in an asset that is already up thousands of percent, then hodling has a totally different experience, let's say. Hodling as an early investor is very different than hodling something that is that is very highly inflate, inflated, might not be the right word here, but highly uh, has increased highly in price in recent times, okay, because the downside is obviously increased. Obviously, I'm not here to say Bitcoin is not going up. I'm not here. I, I am long-term bullish on Bitcoin. Yeah, I, I will openly say this. I am bullish on Bitcoin. So I have spot Bitcoin. So I'm not here to try and cause FUD. I'm not here to try and make anybody fearful. I'm just trying to maybe open your eyes to realize the potential of the downsides that you have to acknowledge, as well as the potential upsides that we're after. And why I think many people will view this similarly as as this as this person's goal for the new year is trading. I think the reason trading would work if you are that late to the asset, because you lose that stress. Let me emphasize this as well. Trading is not easy. Just as hodling late is not easy. Trading is something that takes time. OK, so just as. And as anything in life, you're going to probably start trading and lose money. Yeah, th this is an absolute given. That's why you start trading with very, very, very low amounts of money. Okay, like one very, very extreme low amount of money. You don't want to trade a lot of money when you first start because the, the probably is you're probably going to lose everything because it takes losing a few accounts before you start to understand your mistakes and, and, and learn naturally. But the good thing is that once you have learned to become a trader, once you have that fundamental understanding of the markets, why they're moving up, why they're moving down, why we were, why we look to buy levels of support, why we then look to flip it at levels of resistance, so we can make massive gains to the upside and to the downside. And it removes this, this wanting to look at the chart every 10 minutes, not being able to sleep, looking at other people's opinions. Because when you truly understand trading and you truly have your own plans here, based off of the technical analysis that you have learned, you can then relax. 
There is no stress. That's what you want to achieve now. You want to have this un unstressed. You want to just approach every day with a smile on your face, yeah? And I truly say this from my own perspective, and I think people that have learned to trade at, the, at a high level that we teach would agree with me that when you reach this level of trading, you're no longer obsessed with every move down and every move up. You're okay with missing moves. You're okay with not selling the absolute high and buying the absolute low. You're okay or going on holiday for a week, spending time with your family, because you know there's always another trade. Yeah. And, you know, this video, obviously very different than normal. Wow, 25 minutes. <laughs> How much has it been so long? <laughs> obviously a different video than normal. But it was more to to get your thought process thinking of of when people scream at you, this is the next asset that's going to $1 million. Or look at this altcoin I've just found. It's the future. Get involved now. Buy the pre-sale. Get on my launch pad. La, 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 la. First of all, think, why are they trying to show me this product so aggressively? What is their reward for this? Something to think about, as always. Uh, secondly, think, okay, what... Where would, have, where would be the majority of the hodlers involved in this? Are they sat heavily in profits? Is it still in an accumulation phase at the low? Which we could argue, for example, XRP is. At least you're buying here rather than <laughs> all-time highs. You know, I, at least I understand uh, from a technical perspective why one might buy here. Um, obviously, I'm not telling anybody to buy. This is obviously no financial advice <laughs> because I'm just talking about a theory than anything in particular. And why hodling a asset which you are not early invested to is a totally different ball game than the guy that or girl that buys it you know and they're already sat in thousands of percent profits so overall summary why i say hodling does not work and that is because you are very much likely going to be looking to get involved in an asset that is already pumped extremely hard hodling does not work in that regards because the downside risk is very very large obviously of course in that same kettle of fish other side of the coin, the upside is very large, but getting involved in an asset late, I don't think hodling works in, in my personal perspective. And that's what I wanted to bring you today. I wanted to explain you why I think it doesn't work because of the downside risk, the emotions involved, and why I personally just, you know, turn to trading. <laughs> because with trading like this post kind of gets, you know, hints at it's you are comfortable trading to the downside. You're comfortable trading to the upside. If you are late, if it's in quotation marks, you could say you're very early to Bitcoin. But, you know, overall, people are going to have these different opinions and I'm okay with that. But overall, we are okay with price pumping. We're okay with price dumping. We are not stressing about drops. We're actually very happy when they come. And it's all about tweaking that mentality. Okay, it's tweaking the mentality and um, just understanding... When you have that understanding of the market, I just feel that you have such a, such a, it's just that harmony. I don't know, like this is, you know, I just feel you're at harmony, very peaceful and, and it's just a nice place to be. So um, yeah, you'll have to let me know. Did you enjoy this video? If you did, you can hit that like button, I suppose. Drop a comment down below. I will make sure to read all of them, by the way. Um, I'm sure we'll have some conflicting opinions. Some people will say, hey, Dan, you actually, what you've said today makes sense. Thank you for this. And there'll be some people that say, Daniel, you're absolutely wrong. Everything you said is, is rubbish. And I do not believe anything you've just said. And if that's fine, you know, I'm absolutely okay with that as well. Whether you liked the video, whether you hated it, um, that's down to you at the end of the day. I'm just here to provide my perspective of why I think it doesn't work if you are late to the asset. I will say it does work if you're very early, as I have been early on some assets and I'm very comfortable hodling them. But, uh, you know, <laughs> this is the beauty of the game, everybody. Beauty, beauty is in the eye of the beholder, no? So, I hope you've enjoyed. Thank you ever so much. If you want to see more videos like this, which is obviously not technical analysis, but more of a thought-provoking topic, let me know. A uh, few videos that I had in mind that I could potentially do if you're interested in maybe a part two, part three of um, why I think hodling on the stock market is different than cryptocurrency. That's a potential topic. Why I personally will uh, look more for those long-term investments on the stock market. And uh, a third video, maybe um, 
I don't know, that would probably be my next video then, I suppose. Or how to recognize an altcoin which has high potential for the future, which is not up thousands of percent already. Like a video explaining how you get into the accumulation. How can how can you find an altcoin or an asset in general which has not exploded yet, which you will be comfortable accumulating and then be one of those early hodlers. OK, so if you're interested in one or, you know, two, three part series on this, expanding into the stock market or expanding how you get in early and become one of those hodlers, <laughs> then you can let me know. And I'll be, you know, I'll be more than happy to give you the um, give you give you those videos, really. So you'll have to let me know if you just want me to go back to technical analysis. Hey, I'll just go back to technical analysis. All I'm going to say is thank you ever so much. I truly hope that I've been able to at least open your eyes and even better if I've been able to manage to help you. And uh, I suppose, uh, yeah, that, that that's absolutely it. Covered this comment about why trading is better, about XRP, about this. Uh, yeah, so there you go. I hope you've thoroughly enjoyed. Covered everything I want. And that's me signing out. Thank you ever so much, everybody. And goodbye. Cheers.